Our lecture today will be given by Miriana Chuk. She is a member of our team. She is working with us as a postdoc. And uh, topic of her, uh, the topic of her, it's not thesis uh, of the study, is to study diversity of inland dune vegetation on the continental scale. So now she will uh, present the first overview or the results or the vegetation which she's studying. Um, hi, everyone. I already introduced some previous presentation myself, but I will say also that I'm coming from University of Novi Sad, uh, that is the uh, second largest university in Serbia, and it is placed in northern Pannonian part of the, of the country. <coughs> Here, I'm working on uh, a project on uh, continental scale, yes, and it is funded by Visegrad Foundation, but today I will present only part of these results or actually only parts uh, of uh, the questions we uh, consider in, in our uh, project and it is dedicated to southern eastern Europe, mostly the part of Europe uh, which I am from. So I will start with this quote of uh, Anton Kerner, and uh, it is, uh, uh, for me, uh, I think that even if that is uh, written like 150 years ago, I think that most of us, I can say in my name for sure, uh, can relate with this. If you only once visit the sands, you will come back for sure, and you will always look for some topic or some questions to discover or survey there. So this presentation I divided uh, in uh, four main parts and I will try to uh, present the main features of southern eastern sands and I will give you not so much and not so many uh, details uh, about them. And in first I wanted to discuss with you origin and history of development of sand dunes in uh, southern eastern Europe. And we, when we talk about uh, this, we can say that uh, in uh, all Europe, uh, sand dunes are formed on similar way and in similar time. Uh, most of uh, continental sand dunes in Europe are actually formed uh, in uh, last three periods of glaciations and interglaciations, and uh, all of them are created or uh, formed by winds and by flow of large rivers. And that's why the main sand dunes, inland sand dunes in Europe, are placed along the large rivers like Elbe, Ems, Rhine, Danube, and others. But uh, although they are formed similar time and similar way, mm. uh, they have some differences for sure. Uh, what uh, actually caused those differences? Our surrounding landscape material, which uh, was included in formation of sand dunes, and relief, of course, and some specific environmental conditions. And uh, differentiation led to the, the biggest uh, actually um, uh, differentiation is that we can uh, now we can recognize two main types of inland sand dunes, or, or actually inland uh, <coughs> sand types, acidophilic ones and basophilic ones. The most of inland sand dunes in Europe are acidophilic, are considered as acidophilic. Of course, this main differentiation according pH of the substrate, uh, um, impacted differentiation in floristic composition and, of course, vegetation types. I will give just a small part of our results from previous research and ongoing one. Here we just analyzed not all uh, uh, sandy vegetation in Europe, but veg vegetation on the sands in Pannonian and Pontic Basin. And uh, here we can, uh, we can see 
if we compare more acetophilic ones, vegetation types on the sands colored by green, and more basophilic ones, uh, vegetation types colored by red, we can see differentiation in uh, floristical composition as well as environmental conditions in these two main uh, sand type. When we talk about part of Europe uh, where I am from, southeastern Europe, origin of sands here, uh, actually we have two main theories about origin of sands in southeastern Europe. The first theory uh, includes three main factors <coughs> uh, who actually uh, formed sand dunes. Wind, mostly south uh, eastern winds called Koshava, Danube River, and Pannonian Sea. And those three um, factors together in a long process, followed by uh, ice ages, uh, actually formed the main uh, uh, sand dunes in southeastern Europe. According to some other authors, only wind was the main factor and only one factor for formation of inland sand dunes in southeastern Europe. <coughs> I will just add as an example, uh, Delhi Blato Sands is one of the uh, biggest uh, sand areas in the Europe and one of the thickest sand deposits in uh, southeastern Europe as well. Actually, in accordance to theory that Danube River, alluvial material from Danube and Pannonian Sea uh, together formed sands in this part of Europe. And actually, in uh, Delibrato Sands actually uh, is placed just in front of place where <coughs> Uh, just in front of Jerdav uh, Gorge, place uh, where actually is uh, 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 Pannonian Sea was run out, and that's why here we have the thickest and the most uh, uh, the thickest layer of sands uh, in this part of Europe. Also, I will suggest I, I will add that um, uh, the most important factor for formation of the sand dunes were Koshava southeastern wind which was very strong and it is very strong and the strongest uh, uh, wind blows just in southern part of the sands and that's why in this part of the sands we have the lowest sand dunes. The highest sand dunes are in northwestern part of these sand deposits. Also we can see the dunes track the direction of blowing wind. Uh, the researchers cannot agree about the origin of, south, uh, of uh, the sands of uh, southeastern Europe, but they can agree that the time of the origin, uh, the time of formation of uh, inland sand dunes in this part of Europe is uh, uh, actually beginning of Holocene. When we talk about evolution or, or changes on um, sands of uh, uh, southeastern Europe, uh, the pattern is common for all sands in uh, all continent. Uh, at first, we have um, open grasslands, uh, which actually overgrown the bare sand. Uh, Kerner also described that very nicely. And after those open grasslands become closed grasslands, and sometimes if we don't have any type of management or disturbance, these closed grasslands will become shrubs or forests. But these processes are not uh, irreversible, uh, and uh, we are witnesses that those processes can go in other direction as well. So sometimes especially according our influence, anthropogenic influence on the sand. Uh, it, is, it was very common that uh, forest uh, areas or shrubby areas becomes open sands for the, uh, for the second time. And that was the problem. Especially 200 years ago 
in 18th century, bare sand was uh, very problematic and uh, uh, in southeastern Europe, especially in Pannonian part of Europe, there were many efforts to uh, change this uh, situation. So many processes led to change the landscape, but in meantime, not only changing landscape, in the meantime, the, res the survey of flora and vegetation of these uh, 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 sandy areas also started, has started. So here on the pictures, I have example uh, from Serbia, Veli Blata Sands. And uh, the, this picture actually is the first maybe detailed uh, map of this area. A map before that was from the end of 18th century, not so detailed. And actually that means that uh, people in those times does not uh, was very in common with situation on, uh, on the sands. They know that uh, only <coughs> there are huge bare sands areas. After the, explore, uh, uh, after the exploration of the uh, area started in order to bin the sand, uh, the first detailed map uh, also show are shown. And uh, in this process, especially uh, at uh, the first half of 19th century, <coughs> we have detailed situation of sand dunes in southeastern Europe. And uh, this time was very important, not only for um, uh, surveying, starting surveying uh, sand dunes in uh, southeastern Europe, but also uh, this uh, uh, period was very important for uh, the changing of these landscapes as well. That means that uh, afforestation processes were very intensive and just 100 years after we have a situation that there is no sand at all, bare sand at all, or we have only small fragments when we talk about uh, Southeastern Europe. And uh, mostly uh, these areas are overgrown by, or uh, actually are, are uh, overgrown by some uh, non-native species or are actually planted with some uh, forest species uh, in the past. So <coughs> the effort was to resolve this situation with flying sand. Uh, for example, we always, uh, I found some uh, informations uh, from uh, a 19th century that sand from Deli Blato sands, which is in, uh, in uh, uh, south eastern uh, uh, Vojvodina, actually from eastern Serbia, came to Vienna by wind, and uh, that was a uh, very, um, um, very bad situation because not only flying sand who is flying to Vienna, but uh, sand who actually over um, um, bury uh, and uh, all uh, surrounding, uh, surrounding agricultural fields was actually the, the, the biggest headache. So, uh, the main effort was to change this situation and uh, on uh, ongoing process of afforestation um, <coughs> in different countries, in different uh, uh, sand dunes, different species were implemented to resolve this terrible situation. Uh, in this process, uh, different plant species were selected for bidding the sand, not only the trees, but the main effort was to plant the trees on the sand, and the main headache was to, to find appropriate uh, tree species who will succeed on the sand. But finally, in uh, uh, half of the 19th century, they discovered that Robinia pseudocacia is the solution for Southeastern Europe. So they started to plant Robinia pseudo acacia with huge success, and that success is our headache today. Uh, but uh, 
uh, now we have situation that the biggest um, <coughs> big biggest share of forest on sa on the sands in southeastern Europe are actually non-native forests, Robinia acacia forest. Beside Robinia, the favorite species for planting uh, on the sand were also the pines, but uh, the most su 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 successful one was, of course, black locust. Here I will show <coughs> uh, the result of this success or terrible choices in the past. So uh, when we compare uh, these uh, surfaces uh, with different habitat types in the uh, Delibata sense, ex as example, we can see that uh, the share of uh, open habitats, uh, which are uh, most endangered one and most um, uh, rare one on the sands are actually decreased terribly very very in very bad uh, condition so uh, after this uh, explanation of history and origin of the sands in southeastern Europe I will tell something about uh, <coughs> general characteristics of these sand dunes we agreed about origin we agreed about distribution and characteristic o of sand is base rich in southeastern Europe with different but high uh, amount of carbonate and uh, climate is mostly Pannonian or continental and of course this, uh, this um, uh, characteristics together uh, made the uh, specificity of uh, vegetation and flora in this um, region <coughs> When we talk about uh, Pannonian sand dune, dunes, distribution is along the Danube, and these sand dunes are distributed through seven different countries. But when, in, when we talk about uh, southeastern Europe in geographical sense of view, I will tell something about uh, characteristic of sand dunes in Croatia, Serbia. Romania and Bulgaria. Uh, non, uh, uh, in these countries, uh, we have sands not only along the Danube, in Serbia, all of them are, are along the Danube, but in Croatia, the sand ar sandy areas are not connected to Danube, but they are connected with uh, <coughs> Drava River. In Romania, uh, partly, sand, uh, inland sand dunes are connected with Danube, but also we have some other uh, 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 sand dunes uh, which are connected with Nishag region in, uh, region in uh, uh, Hungary. In Bulgaria, mostly uh, uh, these uh, continental sand dunes are placed along the Danube, but also in uh, a part, uh, this part of uh, um, um, uh, uh, Bulgaria, we also have some dunes, and some of them are uh, in uh, distance of Black Sea and also uh, considered as continental. Uh, when we talk about uh, uh, these uh, uh, con uh, climatic conditions in these um, uh, sand dunes, uh, climate is uh, mostly uh, panonic or continental, and the uh, amount of precipitation uh, does not um, is not higher than uh, 700 millimeters not 70, but 700. And the uh, mean temperature is about uh, uh, 25, uh, 12 degrees uh, per, per year, or <coughs> uh, about 25, 20, 25 degrees uh, in uh, uh, ve vegetation months, uh, uh, ve when vegetation is in peak. Uh, when we talk uh, about uh, this climate condition, I have to, to say that uh, we have several surveys that they are uh, for sure changed, uh, but uh, uh, these some, some of this uh, 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 research says that it is actually changed a little bit at, uh, 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 I think, about one, uh, about one degree <coughs> uh, of uh, uh, Celsius, yes, 
uh, per year. But just for this year, we have situation that uh, February was like 80 degree um, warmer than February in uh, last five years. So I think that this trend will be different for sure in uh, next uh, period. That would be also a strong impact for flora and vegetation. When we talk about pedological characteristics of inland sand dunes in southeastern Europe, uh, I already said that uh, uh, those sands are uh, uh, with high amount of carbonate, but uh, also uh, they, can they can have um, a share of humus in first 80 centimeters of the, uh, 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 of the ground. And of course, uh, amount of humus and amount of carbonates are invasively uh, proportional. Uh, we can uh, uh, distinct different stage of evolution of the sand uh, in uh, sand dunes in southeastern Europe. Some uh, of them has a higher amount of humus, some of them are uh, very, <coughs> uh, uh, very whitish or uh, yellowish and with a low amount of, uh, uh, of humus and of course uh, they uh, are uh, base rich. When we talk about vegetation of uh, inland sand dunes in this part of Europe, uh, we can say that uh, <coughs> uh, the vegetation uh, on the sand, uh, pioneer vegetation is uh, Calerio corineforeta canescentis, and uh, two, only two alliances we can uh, discover here, Co Corineforium canescentis and Vestutium vaginate. But also um, in uh, our results, uh, we can see also we can detect some uh, transitional um, groups uh, or some <coughs> some tradi tra tra tradition uh, transitional um, alliances between those, and also we can discover some alliances from different classes. Uh, uh, but uh, of course they are growing, they are, they are occurring on the sands. And when we compare some uh, <coughs> uh, national uh, overviews of the vegetation on the sand, we can also uh, confirm that uh, mostly uh, those veget that vegetation uh, on the inland sand dunes is placed in uh, Festutium vaginate, but uh, also in some uh, other uh, uh, alliances uh, like Basio Laniflore Bromion Tectorum in Croatia. Uh, when we talk about inland sand dunes in Romania, we, besides Vestutium vaginate, we have also some, uh, especially in northern Romania, we have some acidophilic uh, alliances, uh, associations from Alliance Corineforion uh, Canescentis. Uh, also, in, in Romania, we can uh, uh, discuss about uh, Basio Laniflore Bromion Tectorum Alliance, which is actually pioneer vegetation on the sand. In Bulgaria, uh, we have two uh, uh, so far uh, common uh, described uh, uh, associations, uh, but some of them <coughs> are uh, actually Festutium vaginate, some of them are maybe some ruderal ones. Uh, in Serbia, we have also uh, common uh, uh, Festutium vaginate with uh, uh, one association, but also pioneer vegetation on the sand uh, named uh, Basilone flore Bromion tector tectorum with uh, one association. So here we, we, have, we can see uh, the pictures of those associations from Serbia. But after the closing, the, the, the sands, after the open, uh, after the um, overgrowing of the open grasslands, uh, we can uh, see on the uh, inland sand dunes uh, in this part of Europe, we can see some uh, uh, different associations uh, which actually are placed in Festuco Brometea, and they are considered as closed uh, sandy step. 
uh, uh, those uh, these associations uh, actually are different uh, stages of uh, <coughs> uh, vegetation, uh, grassy vegetation on the sand. And of course, some of them are, uh, uh, are, are actually in, in, uh, a result of the grazing, and actually they are maintained by grazing, for example, Festicopantum tilatum arenaria. These uh, vegetation types are present in, uh, in Serbia. And beside this uh, vegetation of closed uh, uh, step on the sand, uh, we can also <coughs> find some other vegetation types as meadows, shrubs, and forest. I will not uh, uh, going into detail uh, with this. But I will also, again, uh, point out that the most hygrophilic ones, vegetation types in Delhi Blato sands, as an example of inland sand dunes in South uh, Eastern Europe, are in this, sorry, in this part of low uh, sand next to the Danube, where the winds are strongest. Uh, also, I already mentioned that uh, <coughs> uh, evolution of or uh, development of vegetation on the sand can lead up uh, can lead to the forests, natural forest, but also uh, I mentioned that the highest share of vegetation on, on the sands are not natural but artificial forests, uh, artificial forests uh, uh, with Robinia pseudoacacia or pines. <coughs> uh, I will s uh, tell something about uh, condition indicators, the main threats and uh, conservation of uh, inland sand dunes from southeastern Europe. Here I am. I wanted to point out that um, in uh, in in sense of uh, sand dune vegetation, uh, these pioneer open grasslands are uh, the uh, the most important because they are critically endangered habitats and they have really high risk of collapsing and uh, that's why <coughs> we are we have to uh, consider uh, their state and of course to have some uh, conservation uh, measures for them in the future uh, main threats and pressures of these um, uh, uh, habitats or, or, or of this uh, vegetation type of the sand uh, are actually the succession. I already shown that uh, succession process or natural processes can lead uh, to um, loss of some important habitat types, especially pioneer ones. Uh, but also we can uh, consider fragmentation of area what actually <coughs> happened in the Hungary as the one <coughs> of uh, uh, high uh, pressures or threats. Uh, when we talk uh, about uh, changing uh, landscape and, cha and the um, use of uh, these uh, landscapes, uh, that is also very um, high threat for sandy vegeta vegetation altogether. And <coughs> Uh, we also can uh, 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 have in mind that I already m mentioned that before when we talk about afforestation processes uh, which actually happened uh, in the last 200 years. Uh, one of the uh, most uh, uh, of the high threats at the moment are actually uh, 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 abandonment of uh, pastoral uh, systems actually uh, lack of the grazing uh, in one uh, case or overgrazing in other case. Uh, what uh, that means? Actually, <coughs> in some part of the sand dunes in southeastern Europe, uh, we have a situation that uh, 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 the traditional pastoral systems are left. There is no enough uh, stock uh, and uh, enough people in village at all. And that means that uh, there is uh, no any kind of maintenance of the sandy areas. But uh, if there is existing some grazing, usually the same uh, uh, places, the same localities are 
always visited. And in that parts of the dunes, we have huge um, uh, pressures and uh, overgrazing. And uh, that is specifically um, uh, happened in uh, reserves where we have at least three degrees of protection. So the first uh, degree of protection is always uh, strictly protected and uh, nothing is going on there except research. And in second and third uh, degree of protection, we have a uh, huge amount of stock, especially near to the villages. And of course, um, uh, there, there is uh, a huge uh, pressure on the uh, sand dunes and their vegetation. Uh, as a pressure, we can discuss about exploitation of sand. It is uh, problematic and it is not problematic at all because uh, we have uh, uh, some kind of reopening sand and uh, we have opportunity to uh, establish pioneer uh, grasslands again and again, but the bad thing is that in these cases we usually have overgrowing of invasive species and if we uh, actually uh, do not manage those uh, places, they will be something different than uh, we want. Uh, pollution is also very um, a high threat and pressure. Uh, especially in uh, parts of uh, dunes uh, which are connected to agricultural fields and that is actually problematic for all other vegetation types or habitat types as well. I already mentioned invasive or non-native species. Uh, invasive species are very problematic besides black locust. Uh, they are very problematic uh, <coughs> uh, for uh, sands uh, uh, and here we have um, uh, a lot of problems like um, opuntia or um, uh, asclepia syriaca and others. So in order to, uh, this to, to think about uh, these um, uh, highest threats and pressures, I s sorry, uh -huh, okay, uh, I select uh, this analysis uh, uh, of um, share of uh, invasions or invasi invasive species in different different habitat types in Hungary, and I can I, I think that uh, the same thing and same situation is all other uh, same uh, all other countries in um, uh, surrounding areas as well as southeastern Europe. So. Uh, the river in shrublands and woodlands and open sandy grasslands are mm, of course uh, with uh, high pressure of invasive species. And uh, in uh, accordance to this, uh, we have discussed some uh, uh, measures uh, for conservation of uh, inland sand dunes in, s uh, in um, southeastern Europe. And uh, the first thing is uh, conservation of sandy areas. Uh, many sand dunes in southeastern Europe are not conservated at all. N they are not preserved. They are not any type of uh, protected area. For example, in Serbia, completely sands on the right river, uh, ri uh, river bank of Dan Danube, next to the Djerdap, are not conservated, preserved at all. And I'm sure that uh, this is the first thing uh, that uh, should be changed. Uh, and uh, in that, po uh, in, in that, um, um, in that uh, uh, area or in that direction, we can consider also possibility of natural regeneration of uh, these habitats, which is more or less possible. There are some studies uh, to actually survey this very in detail. <coughs> of course, we have to, to uh, re-establish low intensity grazing and uh, maybe mowing. I'm sure that in, s uh, in Serbia, for, uh, for sure, we never um, uh, have this uh, measure. In Hungary, they 
tried, and I will tell something about that, but uh, also in Romania and Bulgaria and Croatia, there was no any measures like this one. As well, next one, uh, there never happened, but they can be good solution for conservation of uh, uh, inland sand dunes in southeastern Europe. Removing of shrubs and biomass, I mentioned in pr my previous presentation something shortly about that, and uh, we had some experiment in Serbia with this, but we need more um, fo focused or organized uh, survey about uh, this process or this measure. And uh, of course, um, uh, the removing of uh, shrubs can uh, should be uh, together, uh, conducted together with uh, removing of biomass. <coughs> In uh, accordance to this, uh, we can also uh, we, we think also that maybe removing not only biomass and uh, unwanted uh, um, vegetation or um, um, species is a solution, but also removing of uh, uh, first layer of soil, which is already uh, very f fertile and maybe will not uh, produce habitat type habitats which we want to preserve. And uh, uh, this uh, last uh, measure, su uh, suggested measure, is actually some plan for um, <coughs> uh, for plantations in Serbia, but still nothing happened on this uh, topic. A replacement of plantations or removing them uh, uh, at all uh, can be a solution. Uh, but uh, replacement of plantations is uh, maybe very time consuming and as well as expensive. So I think that is the main reason what we didn't did not done anything in that direction at all. So <coughs> uh, I suggest uh, I suggested or I mentioned some of um, uh, possible measures for conservation of um, um, uh, inland sand dunes in southeastern Europe. And I choose uh, one nice uh, example, which actually covered some, almost all of uh, suggested measures. Uh, experiment uh, is conducted in uh, neighboring uh, Hungary. And uh, after the removing the uh, 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 plantation of uh, black locust and um, actually removing um, all remains of the black locust. Uh, moving was the next measure uh, which actually was conducted for several years. And here we can see that mostly all of the results like number of target species like rare species or diagnostic species for pioneer grasslands are um, uh, increased uh, almost in every <coughs> tested uh, uh, habitat uh, locality. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the number and the share of invasive species in almost in all locality was decreased. So I think that I uh, told everything uh, in short, what I wanted about uh, 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 southeastern Europe inland sand dunes, and uh, what I also wanted to uh, say he here, thanks for your attention, and also I wanted to ask any uh, uh, for any suggestion what also can be uh, the best way for improving of these uh, habitats, especially. Uh, open and close grasslands on the sands. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>
agree with you. Uh, and uh, uh, at the moment is ongoing um, another study of the um, area. And I think that uh, there will be uh, those uh, protection levels will be uh, reestablished. But uh, what I'm wondering is um, the, the pressures uh, anthropogenic, <laughs> but not those which I mentioned, uh, but um, uh, actually uh, there are a lot of uh, forest here, which can be, and it is, cut, but never replaced with some other, yes, and uh, at the moment we are in uh, some situation that we actually have clear cuttings, but all those areas are overgrown with uh, some invasive species and uh, uh, there is no um, any uh, other measures than cutting. And cutting is, of course, for economical reasons, not in, in uh, uh, way of uh, conservation. But maybe in this um, uh, ongoing uh, uh, resurveying and uh, reestablishing of conservation status, they will uh, change, uh, we will change some <coughs> directions of conservation, I hope. And I hope that will be, <laughs> I hope that that will be uh, also happened because on the paper that means nothing. <laughs> Thank you. I think, uh, thank you for your question. I think that uh, the most problematic ones is Asclepia syriaca, Ailantus altissima, Ambrosia tenisifolia, and now just a few years ago we realized that uh, there is also a huge uh, population of Opuntia humifusa as well. But uh, uh, Opuntia is not uh, such big problem as uh, uh, Asclepias and Ailantus and Ambrosia and um, others. But Ailantus and uh, Asclepias, I think that uh, they are the worst. And, um, uh, there are some places uh, in uh, uh, sandy areas in Serbia which are actually places for taking out the sand, but they are almost always, not all almost, but always on the edges of the reserves, and of course there is no any, um, um, any uh, measurements after that. So they are like dump places, they are like um, just uh, places for taking out the sand, and uh, usually they are just uh, uh, places for overgrowing of invasive species. So there is no any uh, combinations of these ecosystem services like sand is and uh, other conservation measures which can be also very nice. And that can be also very, actually that was happened in Croatia. They co mixed these two things and they have very nice stands of um, uh, always um, uh, very nice uh, stands of um, this uh, <coughs> pioneer uh, sands, uh, pioneer grasslands on the sand. But sometimes that, that can also <coughs> go in some wrong direction if there is no strictly um, uh, planned measures uh, or management uh, in, in the area. So I think it is good in a way that we get rid of biomass and uh, this uh, uh, humus rich uh, layer, but in sense of uh, uh, lacking of any other things after that, it is bad. Mm -hmm. I 
I think uh, in that case, uh, if we talk about uh, just uh, pioneer vegetation like Festutium vaginata, it would be maybe more disturbance than something else. But if we talk about uh, some closed grasslands and um, uh, other types uh, mentioned uh, already on the, on the sand can be uh, a beginning of something good. But just if, if that actually uh, is um, continued with uh, some good measures. Yeah. And I that uh, interesting thing that uh, in Eastern Serbia, the um, uh, dunes are actually place for playing with tanks. <laughs> you uh, maybe know, th know that uh, already because uh, I they are mostly, all of them in the uh, right bank of the Danube are uh, actually used by uh, military. So they have some exercises then there and they make disturbance all the time. <laughs> Thank you. In Serbia? Uh, no, I don't have yet, but uh, I just, uh, uh, this year, I, I will start some. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so far there are some uh, separate studies on the, on the area. There were some um, permanent plots, but uh, never, um, they are, I, I think they are explored uh, uh, until bombing, like 1999. Yeah, after that, no. And uh, I think that um, I will make some permanent plots for sure in different types of uh, vegetation like open grassland, closed grassland, shrubby vegetation, uh, natural forest, artificial forest, and uh, in this uh, part of um, um, manage managed um, uh, shrubby vegetation uh, where uh, they um, reestablished some uh, closed grasslands again. So six different uh, vegetation types for beginning because I don't have any fun funding. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, after that, I will see. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. In that point of view, there is no uh, many... Um, uh, yes, uh, it will depends of funding, of course. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, at the moment, I, am, I was thinking about more maybe to include some other aspects of uh, um, uh, habitat uh, uh, features, not only vegetation, not only flora, but uh, then uh, other some other um, organisms to explore. But in uh, uh, in uh, point of view of management, maybe I will uh, uh, make some uh, exploration in the future when I got some funding. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I would add also in 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 this topic, the <coughs> thing uh, uh, which colleague already mentioned the 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 bad thing. Um, I will uh, I will um, rely only only for Serbia with Serbia because. The, the the best um, uh, thing is to make some exploration without funding bec because the funding from national funds are never going uh, to nature conservation. They're mostly going to some other um, uh, surveys, but uh, nature conservation is like uh, not so popular at all. Mm -hmm. So that's why I uh, decide maybe to look for some international fund or s to do it uh, by myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, after. Yeah, I hope so. I, I actually, just uh, before COVID, uh, there were a huge opportunity to do that, mm -hmm. but uh, COVID with colleagues with uh, from from uh, Germany, but uh, COVID stopped it. But I hope that we will find some way mm -hmm. to do that uh, in detail in the future with some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's right. In uh, edges of the 
if, if you talk about uh, preserved areas in edges of these preserved areas, which are co in contact with um, agricultural fields, uh, for sure they are, uh, 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 of course, the they, there are the the largest populations of all mentioned invasive species. They are uh, here for sure. And uh, of course, yes, I found some uh, invasive species which are closely related to, to agricultural fields, uh, which can be escaped from the field to the, uh, to the sands, and that, of course, can be also another, another problem. So not only nitrogen, but also an uh, um, exchange of the uh, not wanted species, neutrophil species, also can be problematic. You're welcome. <coughs> That is a good question, and uh, we can talk about <laughs> about that in uh, most of these uh, suggestion of measures for conservation, because we cannot m uh, know which is the actually the best uh, um, best uh, uh, yeah direction of our good intentions. And uh, when we talk about uh, cons um, forest replacement, it is actually I think it is not. Uh, uh, planned just because of um, for for sake of the sands. It is something which is happening in all forests in Vojvodina, northern part in Serbia, because uh, a public company uh, called Vojvodina Shume is certified by FSC, who actually force them to uh, convert the species they use and uh, they plant actually. And uh, that was one of their condition to get certificate. So actually they decide to do that for their reasons, not for the sake of the <laughs> preservation of the sands, but they did not never do, do that in the sands because it is very difficult to uh, cut the robinia and uh, plant tilia and expect that it will be grown and su yeah <laughs> with success. So. Uh, I think that will that I'm not sure that uh, will happen at all, but uh, it is actually <coughs> one of the measure for sustainable forestry, like yeah. <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, is is that a good uh, idea, uh, as well as other things like maybe we cannot, we maybe we we should not stop the natural processes at all. <laughs> we can discuss about that and. Uh, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, if that will not be su with success, maybe it's better to not to do that at all. Maybe it's better to cut the trees and maybe trade uh, remains with some <laughs> pesticides. <laughs> and after that, uh, actually, th that experiment in Hungary was uh, led by by that, like like that. And after that, mow uh, all the uh, grasslands and hope. That will be actually results uh, from Hungary showing that it will it will it is a good uh, good um, idea. It is good measure for reestablishing of the uh, grasslands on the sand. So maybe it's better than re uh, re exchanging the species of the trees. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear. A ah, fire, yeah. yeah fire. No, it is. Uh, um, it is not happened in the Delhi Plateau for sure, but in uh, northern Serbia, sometimes they um, made some experiments with that. But uh, uh, in the northern, uh, in the southern, uh, uh, eastern part of the Vojvodina, actually in eastern Serbia, those sands are. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, um, this area of sands is very large, without any. Uh, roads and uh, without any villages and it is about uh, uh, 
350 uh, square kilometers of the nature and uh, they had actually huge problems with fires like a uh, few uh, huge fires in the past which uh, actually burned like one third of the area and uh, there was some exploration how the vegetation reestablished after that and I visited some of those plots those were pro permanent plots in the past but they left it out and uh, at the moment they are really good but uh, no one will give you <laughs> permission for for burning uh, the such huge um, uh, area with uh, forests and the and the grass for sure because they are very aware of the of the of the fire uh, for all year especially in during summer months but maybe can be some of the uh, views but it, it is controversial still <laughs> yeah yeah For a step. <laughs> uh, there are some theoretical studies about that. Uh, and um, uh, all northern part of Serbia, Pannonian part of Serbia, and all Pannonian uh, plain actually is uh, like for a step. And uh, I would say that Aceri Tataritsi Kvercion is uh, natural potential vegetation like mosaics with uh, xerophilus, thermophilus forests and uh, shrubs and uh, grasslands. So that is potential vegetation of... No, 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 because uh, uh, in all Vojvodina only one uh, nat native um, conifer is uh, uniferous. We don't have any other. Only southern from uh, Sava and uh, Danube we have pines on highest elevations. So. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>